coming up on the Cash Rendezvous Halloween special. We'll take you to a bar here in Logan that you can get drinks better than what he's had. Nice off-the-shelf decorations. We'll show you what one man did with what was already in his yard. This is an impressive display here, but we'll take you to another one that's got a rich family history. In his very first start for the Aggies, he became the Mountainless Player of the Week and buried you and will be alive. Do you need to be bundled up this week? I'll show you in weather. We're cooking up something and so is she next on our Cash Rendezvous Halloween special. Welcome to our Halloween edition of Cash Rendezvous. I'm Aaron Cox. And I'm Taylor Emerson. Taylor, I heard you had the opportunity to check out one of the spook alleys here in Cache Valley. I did, Aaron. And if you like Halloween or like stories about spooky and scary stuff, on the island, a family has put together a display that you can tour through to see it all come to life. And I took that tour to show you all the haunting stuff they've got on display. This is Dead Zend Yard Haunt. Hi, how are you guys? Do you guys have a tour guide? A Halloween yard tour that the Wentz family has been putting on for the past 21 years. And every day, it begins right here. Everything everyone sees has to be picked up every night and put inside and then brought back out the next day. And there's a lot of it. What you're seeing here is about one quarter of what we really own. The rest is storage all over the place. But when it's all set out and ready to go, the winces say the fun really begins when the lights come on. I think that's what we enjoy the most. So as spooky and as scary as everything might be, like this hooded guy, those monks, and that skeleton back there, the winces say they're all sentimental to them because they've built almost everything out here and everything you see by hand. Months and months of work that they say all culminates near Halloween. We spend our like summer days and like nights just building creepy things. So. The, all of them have sentimental value. That's why we really don't sell them. <laughs> the Winces say it's not about showing off. It's about giving the community a different take on Halloween. Halloween's like in our whole family's blood. Seeing people's reactions, they feed our passion. The Winces say they never expected that something they started as a family hobby would become such a big spectacle. Alex Zellner is here in the studio with us. And Alex, I recall you saying something about pumpkin spice earlier. That's right, Erin. And if you've been to the grocery store lately, you've probably noticed the pumpkin spice overload. So <laughs> I brought you a pumpkin. Oh, thank you. And I brought you some <laughs> spice so you guys could be a part of the season. But did you know that there actually isn't any real pumpkin in pumpkin spice? Wait, are you serious? Yeah, I, I really am. And you know what? I actually went out and did a little bit of research to figure out why they call it pumpkin spice. And I'll show you guys what I found. Fall is in the air and it has brought pumpkins along with it. And while some people like to carve pumpkins, others like to eat them. I like good pumpkin spice stuff. I don't like it if it tastes fake. Fall brings on the pumpkin spice invasion in grocery stores, but what does pumpkin spice even mean? Probably just some nutmeg and cinnamon and some pumpkin stuff. It's a little bit of, I know it has a little bit of nutmeg and cinnamon and a couple other fall season flavors. Most pumpkin spice items get their name from the spices, not because they contain any pumpkin. When many people see pumpkin pie spice, they think it has actual pumpkin in it. In reality, things like this are actually just flavored with artificial flavoring and colored with things like carrot juice or contain actual pumpkin pie spice, which is cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, and allspice. However, some people just don't like pumpkin spice, so to them it doesn't really matter what's in it. Pumpkin spice um, is not my favorite. I'm kind of into the idea of it, but every time I actually try something that's pumpkin spice, it's kind of a letdown. For those who don't enjoy the taste, that may still enjoy the smell, there are pumpkin spice air fresheners. If you're a pumpkin spice fan, there is no shortage on the variety of pumpkin spice items, including Cheerios, Pop-Tarts, and beer. No matter how you feel about pumpkin spice, Christmas is already creeping around the corner and pumpkin spice will be gone before you know it. Alex Zellner, Cash Rendezvous. If you want a recipe for something pumpkin spice with actual pumpkin in it, check out our Facebook page. I can't believe it's fake pumpkin spice. You know, Erin, I had a thought that it might have been fake all along. Oh, like hot chocolate? Exactly. Uh, what a letdown. 
When we come back, we'll show you how one man turned the junk in his yard into a haunted trail. And we'll tell you something you may not know about your favorite fall treats. Come and try the strength and conditioning class. Train like an athlete. Sorry, I've got big ideas. As a college student, you have big ideas to make a big difference on campus. Why not get funding for those ideas in a big way? The Blue Goes Green Grant provides funding for student sustainability projects. These projects help USU students be more environmentally responsible, live healthier, and save money. To find out more, go to usu.edu slash bgg. Get funding for your Blue Goes Green idea in a big way. Blue Goes Green. Make a difference. Enroll. Budget, so don't accept defeat. Now you can get covered and still buy me trees. You take care of your pets. Now it's their turn to take care of you. Visit getcoveredamerica.org to learn about your health insurance options. One man's trap. Another man's treasure. That sounds familiar. <laughs> I went to Wellsville this week to see how one Aggie alumni has turned junk on his property into a haunted trail along with his homegrown corn maze and pumpkin patch into what is known as Little Bear Bottoms. What you see is junk. What he sees is... So we hooked that up to some air. Potential. I just knew it was going to be the best place to have a haunted trail. Old tires, old mattresses, even an old ice cream truck. It's just little things like that that make a haunted trail like it is. Aggie alumni Jed Clark has run this haunted trail, corn maze, and pumpkin patch for 14 years. When we got this place, there was all kinds of junk, farmer junk, collectors, everything, and so we started saying we've got to make a trail here. But he didn't stop here. When you have corn, you have to have scarecrows. Not just ordinary scarecrows. This is the skinny dipping scarecrow. Usually the priest says, until death do you part, you just come up with ideas of every day of what's going on. Ideas like a straw pyramid. You can climb on them. There's tunnels underneath that you can go under. And a barn ride with stories. Quit clowning around up there. Don't ah! <laughs> Get that thing out of here. That didn't scare you guys, did it? It was so much fun. And the stories that were told were really fun. Oh yeah, and the why? What's your name? Clark telling stories. For a while and they grow really big. And, and then there's Clark's cow. personal story. You're looking at 16 acres of corn that Clark says he used to sell to a local dairy. Everything came down for Clark when the local dairy called saying they no longer needed the corn. Surrounded by corn like I am now, Clark says that's when he decided it was time to cut his own corn maze. And he just got in the tractor and made some paths. Rednecking is just all about that. You just make do with what you have and try to survive. It's just grown bigger and we've gotten a lot better through the years. And she's not the only one who thinks so. It's super fun. Funny. Creative. To like jump around and like play. Just so much to do for kids and um, families. And a few screams. <laughs> for those interested in something spooky. <laughs> On our Facebook page, there's a little link to the Little Bear Bottoms website with hours and pricing. They will be open on Halloween. A long time ago in a pumpkin patch far, far away, These Star Wars displays were made from pumpkins and are a part of the annual North Logan Pumpkin Walk, which ran for five days and attracted 5,000 people a day. Children and adults came to see pumpkin scenes such as Moana, Alice in Wonderlands, and Anne of Green Gables. Jenna Worthen said they had a lot of creative people build scenes this year. We have all sorts of different people. We have people who have done it since it was on the farm, uh, people who have joined later. We've got businesses, we've got 
uh, community groups, and then just individuals and families who just are creative and just enjoy being able to create. The Pumpkin Walk had over 25,000 visitors. And now we'll take a look outside on the quad at this beautiful sunshine we're enjoying right now. When we come back, Braden Clark will have your full Cache Valley weather report. Can you consent with me? Imagine what you'd see if every child had a book to read. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Welcome to ATV Weather, and I'm wearing a robe. I'm Braden Clark, and I am giving you the weather, weather today. We're going to go ahead and look over here on the East Coast, and look over here in North, uh, kind of New York, Pennsylvania over here. They're going to be hitting, getting hit with this little weather cloud over here. It's going to go up, keep going north, northeast, striking Maine, and Rhode Island, those places like that. So you're going to get a lot of a lot of rain. The darker colors indicate more rain into these, uh, these small little clouds. So if you see over here and you get a little bit down here in Florida as well, you're getting a lot of a little bit more pre uh, precipitation out there. If you want to go ahead and check over here in the Midwest, you got a lot of uh, small clouds, I would say, in over Texas, Nebraska, and Oklahoma. Nothing to be too worried about. Even over here over Iowa and Michigan, you're going to get a little bit of a little uh, rain over here, but nothing too, too, mu too much to worry about if you're in that area. Let's go, go ahead and look over here at our west coast. There's nothing really. There's a little bit of, over here in California. There's little, little clouds, nothing too crazy, nothing, nothing right here in the wet states of Washington. There's nothing really going on, so it's good to know if you're planning on going out west. We're going to head over to Utah, though, check out what's happening over here. It's actually a lot of, a lot of uh, clouds is actually happening over in Logan, especially Logan, Ogden, and Layton area. There's got a lot of clouds uh, forming in this area. You're going to just be careful if you're going outside. If you have any plans, make sure you bring a raincoat. It's getting colder. Speaking of cold, we're going to jump into our seven-day forecast. Perfect. And if you want to look at over, starting on Wednesday, actually, today it's 68 degrees, so it's nice and sunny. So if you have plans, go outside today. It's going to be well worth your time, especially with this high 68 with a low of 32. So if you do go outside later in the day, make sure you bring a coat. Jumping over to Thursday, it's going to be right around the similar 64 degrees, 27 low, a little cloudy. So if you don't like the sun, like maybe you want to wear a hood or something like that, that would be the time to do it. Jumping into the weekend, we got Friday with a 60 degrees and 46 low. But if you're an Aggie fan, you got a 60 degrees on during game day. You got 60 degrees, but 
it's a late game, so you're going to want to pay attention to this number right here, the 31. So bundle up, make sure you're re uh, ready for that, the cold weather. And then lastly, we're going to look at Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. You're looking around a 60s, uh, some 50s in, on Monday, but you're going to get a lot nicer weather in those days. Just making sure that you are prepared for something like that. You know, the, those cold weathers, the cold weather is coming, and just mentally prepare yourself for the winter because it is coming. Yeah, and I, I'm not looking forward to the snow. Yeah, well, you got another week until that happens. Oh, wow. So. Let's hold on to these warm weathers and warm temperatures. And when we come back, love was in the air in Las Vegas. Well, at least 316 yards of it. And the Grizzlies concluded their season against Payson last week. We'll show you if they were able to go into hibernation on a good note. Aggie Air is an innovative engineering program exclusive to Utah State. It provides opportunities for students to get hands-on and real-world experiences. By building model planes that photograph and scan detailed images of landscapes, Aggie Air can change the way we use the Earth's surface. Watch as Aggie Air takes flight. Don't look at me! Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. You should pick that up. <laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look! Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here's gonna help you, because no one Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. That was Matt Wells and Sully Tamavanis showing some frustration after back, to ho back home losses to Mountain Division opponents. Actually, it wasn't. I guess we didn't have the video. Uh, anyway, welcome to ATV Sports. I'm Bo Lamb. After two back-to-back -back losses, the Aggies found themselves in a tough position near the bottom of the Mountain West and carrying a losing record. The stakes were high in Las Vegas. Early on, early on the Rebels had the hot hand. There's junior running back Lexington Thomas breaking one. Two, three, four, five, and nearly six tackles. To borrow a saying from my old coach, Coach Stensgard, the Rebels were going through them like rice through a goose, jumping out to an early 14 to nothing lead. USU went all in, trying to turn the tables, flipping it on the reverse to Vegas native and Centennial High School product, Savon Scarver, who gets stripped and coughs up the ball. Taylor, the Aggies were bleeding ships in this one. What do you think Matt Wells was thinking about? Job security, Bo. It probably was. Uh, so, but the Aggies had an ace in the hole, redshirt freshman Jordan Love in his first career start, who, if you haven't heard, has a canyon, finding Scarver, who then snags the redemption catch and dashes 70 yards. Scarver would continue to do his best thunder from down under impression and put on a show for the hometown crowd with this 65-yard kick return. Kent Myers led the offense in the end zone as well, giving it off here to Lawan Hunt, who kicks it outside and scores. He would have a career high in touchdowns with three. You know, the defense gave Love some love in this game. I could have thrown this pass to Jordan Nathan, who runs double time to bring the Aggies within one score. After this nifty toss to Hunt, the Aggies would punch it in to tie the game. In the third, Love would show off his foot speed and take it himself. Right here on the right side. In fact, Love would be named the Mountain West Player of the Week after throwing for 316 yards. And the defense shut the Rebels out in the second half. Aggies win, uh, come from behind fashion, 52 to 28. So a little bit better feeling for the Aggies now after getting a win in Vegas. They still have to climb, have an uphill climb though, if they want a chance at the Mountain West title and a bowl game. Let's take a look at the standings. 
In the Mountain Division, Utah State has two wins and two losses. They have already lost to Colorado State and Wyoming, who are both ahead of them. In order to win the division, they will have to have a little help from all three teams ahead of them. Colorado, Boise, and Wyoming all need to lose some games. The Aggies can help themselves out some, though, this week by beating Boise this Saturday. Here's what you can expect out of the Broncos. The Aggies seem to have found their quarterback. That's not the case with the Boise State. Even though Brent Rippon is a two-time All-Mountain West quarterback with a powerful arm, Boise plays both Rippon and Mo Montel Cozart heavily. They usually bring Cozart in in short yards or red zone situations, sometimes even throwing, him, throwing to him, as we see there. And uh, the Aggies will have to watch out for this, ex the extra arm and pair of legs in the backfield on Saturday. And it wasn't just USC football that did well this week. The soccer team beat UNLV 2-1 on Friday and Nevada 4-0 on Sunday. Congratulations to them. It was senior night for a few high school football teams in Cache Valley last week. For Logan High seniors, it would be their final game in a Grizzly uniform. The game versus Payson that Logan dedicated to breast cancer awareness did not start out as hoped with the Payson O-line dominating the trenches and Harrison Judd easily finding the corner for this or early score. Logan would respond with a high-powered air attack First on this connection from senior QB, Peyton Stokes. Then another beautiful pass that sells right through the night sky and into the waiting arms of Charlie Jensen. The Grizzlies would go for two to pull ahead eight to seven before halftime. Logan would go for two every time in this game. Logan's senior receiver returned this kickoff to start the second half. Dangerous for Payson because he can see the field. He finds a hole in the coverage and takes it. All the way to the house. Later, Quincy Wildman, now there's a threatening and familiar name, carries the pace and defense on his, on his back. And he's still going. Then Taylor, the Grizzlies pull out the old hook. And ladder. To the big dude, 260-pound Kyle Truex. The Lions would stop Logan from scoring, but flipping the field helped to set up this pass to Dylan Butters. He gets about to the 15. And this posterizing catch, reeled in by the senior, playing his last game, Brandon Dodd. Logan wins on senior night, 28 to 14. This was Logan's last game of the season, but a few local teams made the playoffs. Mountain Crest, Skyview, Ridgeline, and Bear River all have playoff games this week. So, uh... Anyway, I'm really excited for the playoff games. I've been waiting all season for it, and now here it is. Skyview's undefeated, right? They are undefeated. They haven't lost. Wow, and Mountain Crest right behind them. Yep. You guys got pretty into those games there. <laughs> Thanks, That's what Bo. we do. Thanks, Bo. When we come back, we'll show you how one Logan man is trying to add something special to Logan's nightlife. If you need a place to work out and you want to let off some steam, this might be the gym for you. She doesn't really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? <gasps> wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah, I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. Texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, has she texted me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. Can you feel the sun? 
So you guys, would you say Logan is known for its nightlife? Uh, there's a few places. Uh, not really. Let's be honest. Logan's more of a family place, even though it is a college town. Well, a Logan man is actually trying to change that. He believes Cash Valley needs something, and he's hoping to bring this so it brings their nights to life. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. A place where people can come to eat, drink, and listen to good music. That's Mark Lunt's goal. I have a vision for Logan and what it could be. Locals came out to show their support for the Cash's Kickstarter last Friday. A local band performed at the event. Mark says he loves the new location because of the busy road outside. Like the street in front of it, Mark hopes this building will be just as busy when he opens in January. A KSM sales rep says he's excited for the new venue with the recent closing of Y Sound. It's everything. Like We've got tons of talent in the valley, so we've got lots of crazy good guitar players and musicians here. Um, there's no place to play. Looking forward, the cash is going to be the place to be. They've got a stage, professional sound, professional audio system, which the community is donating the money for. Uh, we all know there's a need, and that's why we're willing to donate our time and everything for this venue. Braden Clark, Cash Rendezvous. For the next few months, the cash will have Kickstarters before the doors open in January. For more information, you can check out our Facebook page. What have you spilled on your garage floor? Oil, antifreeze, what about blood? Our Chaz Ricks visited one garage that has more blood and grit than cars and tools. Boom. See what I mean? That's the form. These kids are taking boxing lessons from Ryan Gregory. He's taught boxing since he was 24, and now he's teaching out of his garage. Better fighter stance. It's the only thing I could do. I had no money. I have no... It's just saving money for the new location. So, it's a means to an end. So if I have the equipment, why not? Being in his garage hasn't stopped him from teaching adults at all different levels of boxing. There it is. Here at Cash Valley Boxing, they teach you how to hit, block, and take a hit. Alex Musia says she first started taking classes to learn to defend herself, but she says the sport has been free. This is something where you can take out your aggression on people in a safe way, in a safe environment, knowing that you're not going to really hurt each other. But you can get a little bit of aggression out, a little bit of stress out from your busy week or whatever. Gregory says it takes a team to get better. We're here just really to have fun and to learn from each other. You bond deeper than than just the team aspect. I mean, some people, we've bled on each other, we've sweat on each other. Musia says they're a team that looks out for one another, even when those boxing gloves are on and they're punching each other in the face. And that's one thing that I love about this group is that we all have each other's backs. Chaz Ricks, Cash Rendezvous. With Halloween just around the corner, it made us wonder, what is the best way to keep trick-or-treaters safe? So we went out to into one Logan neighborhood to ask the experts. Ask your parents to have permission to leave and keep with your friends or your mom and dad. I'm going to wear gloves safely so cars can see me. When I go trick or treating, I always bring a flashlight so I don't get hurt by things that are on the ground. And going trick or treating in a big group. Look both ways before you cross the street and. Stay on the sidewalk. I hold my hand. I will cross a street. When I go trick or treating, I don't stay out too late. I'm kind of a troublemaker, so I kind of have to, you know, stay with the group <laughs> and wear a light and stuff. Whenever I go trick or treating, my parents always check my candy for needles and drugs. I was with my friend and her and his mom, and we were walking. And all I remember is that she wouldn't let me go near the road unless I had like a glow stick or something like that. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Cash Rendezvous. Watch all of our latest editions of Cash Rendezvous and ATV News on our Facebook page. We'll leave you